Today we're going to talk about if the Menagerie actually saved Destiny 2. And we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome to Guardian Watcher. So, today I actually want to talk a little bit about the Menagerie. And if the Menagerie actually saved Destiny 2. Real quick, this video is not a guide on how to actually do the Menagerie, but just to talk a little bit about the impact that it has actually made on the game. I will give a few tips here and there though in order to help be successful in the Menagerie as you progress through the different encounters. So, how big was the impact of the Menagerie for Destiny 2? Well, many would say that it is the reason why Destiny 2 is still surviving especially when all of the new games for 2019 are soon to be released. However, others, like myself, don't think that is the case at all. Destiny 2 has since its release been an ever so expanding universe. With each season comes something new. This refresh of new content is what keeps our attention as gamers and has us wanting more and more. But the Menagerie is Bungie's latest addition to the game and it has been a game changer. Now, this is not saying that the Menagerie has saved Destiny 2. If you haven't played Destiny 2 since before the Season of Opulence, the Menagerie is a new 6 player PvE activity that requires you to stay on your toes. The location of the Menagerie is on a Leviathan, but you don't have to unlock some secret door just to get into it. You can actually just fast travel to the location, and it's actually on the right of the Leviathan. Inside of the Menagerie, there are seven different encounters, including the Lamp Lighting, which you will have to do when you first enter the Menagerie. After the Lamp Lighting, the rest of the encounters are completely randomized, and you need to complete them before you get to go on to the final boss, and are able to loot the chest at the end. And looting the chest, many have already done. And what I'm actually talking about is actually farming that last chest, but that's for another conversation. However, these encounters have raid type mechanics which make each encounter more and more interesting. There are phases with each encounter and it gets harder and harder with each completed phase. When going into the Menagerie, you definitely want to have a few uh, Warlocks with Well of Radiance as well as Tethers and some might even want to go Invis, that way they won't have to worry about taking so much damage. Support classes will help complete each encounter a lot easier. Without them, it's just going to be a lot more difficult and a lot more headaches because you'll be waiting to get rest. Also, scattered about the Menagerie are little trinkets of lore which are sometimes a little hard to find but not impossible. To date, I think I found like 6 without any guides but there are more than 6 and there are guides out there to help find the rest of the trinkets. Completing each encounter in a timely manner will unlock triumphs for the Menagerie which will give you Imperials to unlock more things for your Chalice. Now, as I said earlier, the Menagerie is a 6 player game mode. You can either bring any combination of friends up to 5 or you can completely go in and have the Menagerie matchmake for you. But because of this there are two downsides to the Menagerie. One, being that if you do not know how to actually complete each encounter then you will spend more time doing each encounter and dying instead of actually doing the objective. And the second issue is just matchmaking itself. It really, really sucks going into matchmaking for any type of event in Destiny 2, let alone the Menagerie, but if it matchmakes you into a game where even the people that you are matchmade don't know what to do, it could be very frustrating. But that isn't always the case. When coming to a new encounter, you will be able to rally the flag like you would in a raid and re-up on ammo and abilities. Then while doing each encounter, it's pretty much a lot of rinse and repeat but it does get harder as you go on so it doesn't actually get boring. And you pretty much do all of the encounters until you get to the final boss and loot the chest. At the end of the Menagerie, the game gives you like 250 plus seconds to run around. Now you can use this time to farm the chest or go looking for little trinkets of lore. All in all, the Menagerie is an extremely fun activity for old and new Destiny 2 players and with Destiny 2 Shadowkeep on the rise, I can only see this game mode getting better. So, did the Menagerie actually save Destiny 2? I would say no. It just made a great game even better, 
and I have a lot of high hopes for the Menagerie in the future. So what do you guys think about the Menagerie and its impact on Destiny 2? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Or do you wish there was a little bit more to it? Personally, I think that it would be a good idea to actually have like a little maze that everyone had to go into and no one can take the same route in order to get from encounter to encounter. But let me know in the comment section what you guys think. And that my friends brings us to the end of the video. Toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it and feel free to watch these videos as well. Definitely get subscribed for more Destiny 2 content coming at you soon. And I will see you guys in the next video.